20 years ago, Chris Thompson's father saw a need to move away from a reliance on pesticides in food production. He began a business called BioForce, breeding beneficial insects to act as biocontrol agents. Today, Chris is a product manager at BioForce, supplying good bugs to glasshouse growers producing mainly tomatoes, capsicums and cucumbers. A lot of growers are trying to go chemical free, there's a lot of motivation to do that. So by introducing our insects into their glasshouse they can get long term sustainable pest protection, so that way they don't need to spray. The science around this is very well understood, the insects have their particular um, flavours they like to eat, the Ancasa eat whitefly, our uh, mitae and mitee go after the spider mites. So. It basically comes down to how big your pest pressures are or how big your crop is and what time of the year and we can tell you what to put on there and how much. Uh, we breed eight different types of beneficial insects on our premises here in Karaka. Each of them has their own different part of the food chain, that uh, part of the whole pest management system that they look after. We get a lot of new inquiries where people have sound insects on their crop they can take a picture or try and describe it to us over the phone and we'll let them know what it is. It's not always a bad bug. Uh, often a good bug from New Zealand has actually found its way on there and it could be the reason why you don't actually have so many pest problems because he's cleaning them all up. In this room we are rearing white flies for the Encasia Formosa production. We have to produce some white fly because white flies are the host organism for the tiny wasp Encarcia formosa. The host plant has to be a suitable plant for both the pest and the biocontrol agent. Uh, tobacco plants is really suitable and white flies just love it. And at the same time, we can get a lot of benefit from these very large leaves. In this way, we can get a very high amount of white flies larvae. And the idea is to mass rear Encarcia formosa. So we have to produce a lot of white flies. And their leaf, you have hundreds of white flies. They are laying eggs at the moment. And these eggs will become larvae. And within these larvae, the Encarcia formosa will lay an egg one egg per larvae. Here we have introduced uh, parasitoid, the wasp Encarcia formosa, and we can see that parasitized white flies larvae are turning black at the moment. So we can easily make a difference between the black ones, which are parasitized white fly larvae, and the yellow white ones, which are unparasitized. The black ones will hatch an Encarcia formosa will hatch and fly away and will be able to parasitize about 50 white flies larvae. The next step from here is to remove carefully these Encarcia larvae from the leaf. After that we will clean it and finally we will pack it, um, fixing them on cardboard tags, which are actually the final product and the product which is delivered to growers. There's another way to rear beneficial insects. We rear them in these boxes and we can supply growers with either young or adult individuals. This way to rear them can be more expensive because we have to feed them with some expensive diet most of the time. This is the packaging we supply growers with in Cassia. And at the moment, as a part of our quality control system, I am checking the emergence rate to know if we have the right number of that tag. In this video, we can see Encarcia formosa looking for a suitable host, a suitable white fly larvae. At the moment, Encarcia is laying his egg into the larvae, and this larvae will turn black. We can say that this larvae is parasitized. After that, a new adult is emerging from this larvae. There's a growing number of pests washing up on our shores each year. It's quite a concern for us. There was a potato psyllid around about two years ago that knocked the country for six. 
some of the growers here, it's not well understood that they would grow the entire nation's capacity of, say, cucumbers or capsicums. That is only for export. So when they're not allowed to export, that becomes a flood of produce onto our market. So we are a little bit uh, worried about when new pests do arrive, how quickly can we react? We're trying to find more native insects in New Zealand. There is a lot around. The difficulties are they may not like being on commercial crops. They might prefer to be on ferns and other native plants. We are trying to work more and more with the outdoor growers. Uh, traditionally, outdoor growing is a little bit more difficult because you don't have as much control. You can't govern the temperature and humidity. And also, a lot of these insects have got legs and wings, they can move. So you might put them on your field, but they walk on over to your neighbours. We'd like to see the market change a little bit more to reflect the effort a lot of growers have put in to become organic. I mean, other than shopping at your organic supermarkets, you're guaranteed organics. Uh, at your normal uh, fruit and veggie shop, there's a very good chance a lot of our customers' produce has wound up there and it could be um, as close as you could ever get to organic, but you're not going to know. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.